All right. So we start with our number. How you feeling on this Friday? Uh, probably like a three and a half oh. slash four. On a Friday, you feeling that low? Well, yeah. It was a it was a tough week. <laughs> it was just a tough week. Mm-hmm. Um, a year and stuff like that. Okay. All right. So this last observation I did was an informal, and I left a note that said it was informal. Yeah. And if you haven't seen the informal document that we're using, it's saying like when you look at your scorecard, it's all in there. We'll do the note catcher mm-hmm. um, for there, and then we will um, do scores. You haven't had the form yet. I don't know if you're on my list or whose list, but you will be having that soon. Okay. All right, so today, I'm just gonna spend a few minutes um, just talking about the access from last time we met when we talked about um, using proximity in the classroom we talked about implementing your um, behavior plan track and tracking the steps um, in there so last coaching, coaching set, session we set a goal by using proximity in the classroom we redirect the students I saw you go to different tables not only to redirect students but also to give clarifying um, information about the assignment so during that time what do you think made that um, successful why you were using proximity and going around to the classroom doing your um, class lesson? Um, I mean, I, I think that the, obviously just like being closer to the students gets them to, you know, stop their behavior, but also I noticed that, which I know it's like a, it's a never ending process. Like you don't, you can't ever stop. You have to keep on going, from, you know, and that's fine. That, I mean, that is what it is, but um, it's a, it's an ongoing um, thing. I think if you plan to build a culture where you don't have to do that, I think at some point you will be able well, to. Right, right. But not, I mean, we're only in October. Yeah. So I definitely wouldn't say that in October is that that's already um, done. I always say kids are not routinized until December yeah. for that. And so that's when they have the routines down and systems down and know the teachers and they are good for that. Um, so today I wanted to dive into your classroom management plan that you have here. And I know last time we talked about the steps and tracking behavior when you were um, giving out um, redirection. So have you tried tracking the behavior and going down the steps with yeah. the students? So I started using two things. Okay. Um, I started using just like the the cards, just so that they could have okay. like a visual thing of the three. Okay. Things. Okay. So I've been using that for all grades, though I I admit that I think it's working much better with the younger mm-hmm. kids. Um, I'm still kind of struggling on how to, uh, I guess, track those steps with. The older kids when there's so I feel like there's so many things happening so quickly mm-hmm. that I don't know, always know how to track like keep track of who is where in the mm-hmm. levels do you know what I mean yeah um, this helps but I, I still think that kind of like it it becomes cumbersome with the older kids because there's just a lot more going on the younger kids see this and they they do recognize what it is and they kind of stop where the older kids don't. And I know that comes down to following through with all of the, mm-hmm, the things. Mm-hmm. So I'm still getting used to it, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and I'm still trying to work out how to better use this for older kids. Okay. So what do you think would merit a successful implementation with the older kids for this? What, do you, what are some ideas that you have that you think would merit some this for the older kids? So what's successful with the younger kids uh-huh. that um, that that you think you could do to make it successful with the older kids? Well, I guess that's where I'm, I'm mm-hmm. running into trouble. Like, the younger kids, they they haven't gotten past the orange car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the older kids are getting, are routinely getting to the red card and then, you know, I'm either remind messaging them or text messaging parents and the reflections are, I don't know if the reflections are uh, 
actually reflective or if it's just a if it's, a, it's an obligation to them you know what I mean and so like the, the younger kids I think are getting to a point where they're they're wanting to avoid getting to the red and I don't know that the older kids care about it yet so when we talk about older kids in general just think about their behaviors what drives them what motivates them um, one thing for younger kids, we know that they want to be, they're at the age where they want to please the teacher, they want to do good. Middle schoolers are at the age where they have to be retaught how to be good and how to, um, and how to redir redirect their own behavior. So thinking about that, how, what do you think you can do with the older kids? And I'm going to give you a hint in the opposite direction for them not to get there. I mean, do positive incentives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, and that's mm -hmm. I'm doing that with the younger kids. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I guess I can. I mean, I have a kickboard point chart so that they're they're keeping See? track mm -hmm. of. Oh, that's nice. The points they get, and I give them a little sticker when they get a point. So I'm tracking it in, in the app, and then mm -hmm. they're tracking it on their desks. And I think I, I guess I could do something similar, for the older kids. I might want to talk to the middle school team. To see what kinds of what kinds of things that they would be motivated by, like mm -hmm. what sort of incentives. Because I keep on, I, I I go back to these things that are like, to they're perfect for the little kids, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they're really appropriate for the older kids. So I want to talk to them and see what kinds of things they're doing, what's working with them. And I did the same thing. I had them write on a um, index card what kind of rewards and incentives they like. And they were, some were very, very simple things that you wouldn't even be like, oh, really? You know, stuff like that. Um, believe it or not, they do like this one as well, too. Like, they would, oh, my God, it's a pencil. Like, they've been dying in my office to get a breast cancer pencil or the positive motivation pencils that I have in there. So okay. they were also, like, doing right. from that, too, as well. And also, they would just, they would love the points, too for that too. So mm -hmm. in, in order when you're tracking them when you're tracking them with this, also um what Ms. Maybell does, she has there, she printed their pictures off power school and she uses that as a tracker on her clipboard every time they come to class. And she monitors their points, she monitors their deductions, and you can also um, track them with, with their steps too since you're having problems tracking okay. with their step too. So if you have um a paper that you're tracking during the class and it's really easy to track you just say oh Devin got to step one you know and that's the end or Xavier got to step two so you know where they you know where they are tracking to and it's also data for you to collect to see who is getting the most mm -hmm. um, colors and where um, for that so I think that'll be um, good for tracking so tell me what do you think the benefit is and following and tracking this plan? Um, I mean, I, I think, uh, so I, I'm gonna focus on the younger kids because I think it's, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still, I'm seeing more success with the younger kids right now and I haven't fully worked out all the things with the older kids, but um, I think it's, it's been helpful for them to have this, a visual reminder of what's going on or what, what they're, behavior is, um, where they're at in the, in the, um, steps. And I also think that, you know, I, I don't, I don't make a point of make like of making an example of anybody. Like I don't say this person's getting a mm -hmm. card, but I do put it down and I do think that the other kids do see that I'm actively mm -hmm. doing that. So and so, yeah, and so I think it, it does help to maybe curb some of the behaviors mm -hmm. before they start. Um, the incentive, the, the point chart has worked really well because, and I'm, truthfully I've been using this, I've been using the point chart more than the steps, mm -hmm. trying to And that's push, where you wanna go to. Right, I'm like, try, I've been trying to push more of the, the positive, like, um, reacting to the positive and ignoring some of the negative that's stuff that I can ignore. Um, and I think that's been helpful. They're becoming a little bit more driven by getting the positive points or the stickers rather than uh, 
being afraid of getting the cards, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So. So if we had to talk about um, action steps and we're talking about, and I'm gonna push you on the middle school students. Yeah. I know sometimes we shy away from the middle school students because they're more harder to yeah. figure out for. What do you think your action step would be um, for the middle school students to implement this plan? I mean, solidify the plan to begin with. Like that's the, I have to get it. What does that look like? Um, I mean, I, I think just uh, talk, I need to, I want to talk to the middle school team a little bit mm -hmm. more to see what they're doing and what works and then um, probably tweak it a little bit for my needs because it's such a short amount of time. So I need mm -hmm. to figure out what, uh, like what's the quickest way to implement this plan because it's, it is so, it's such a short amount of time. And then I also want to adapt this for the older kids. Or maybe not, maybe it's, maybe it's fine the way it is, but I want to do some sort of positive tracking with them as well. So get that set, like make, make that happen. And then when you, so how did you explicitly explain, teach this to the class? Um, so I mean, I just, I, I, I explained to the younger kids with this, I explained how, we talked about, about kickboard and what kickboard is, and um, we talked about how they get kickboard points and reminded them about the core values, and they all actually pretty much knew. It wasn't, I, I was surprised with how much they already knew about the core values, which is good. It tells, us, it tells me that teachers are really pushing it. And then I, connected this to the kickboard points and so that they to make sure that they understood that they could actually see their points going up it was because we don't have a way of projecting the kickboard screen so they can't see it oh yeah because you're well no but i mean like it doesn't really work to project that screen onto you know the way it did with when i did class dojo that worked better but um so i just i i i did some examples and i show them how I would give a kickboard point, and then give them a sticker. I mean, it was pretty straightforward. It's not too difficult. So with this chart, is this for each class? Uh, each student gets one, and it's a sticker per point. So when they get, when they get their, fi their fifth sticker, mm -hmm. or fifth point, um, they get a certificate and a sticker. And I told them also that um, sometimes I'll give out Rarely, but sometimes I'll give out class points. Mm -hmm. Like to the, the entire class is like I'm looking around, the entire class is on task. Mm -hmm. I'll give out a class point, but that, then I don't give out a sticker to everybody in the class. It's, a, it's just an extra. So like when, they, when they are on point for themselves, that's when they get the sticker. Um, I've lost track of what you asked me originally. No, that was um, how did you teach, how did you explicitly teach oh, yeah. this? Um, even with the step one warning, how did you teach this um, to the class? So when class starts, do you are you continuously going over this at the beginning of class? Yeah, I mean, I, I have them, it's a, there's a ritual of, okay, go into your pocket folders and take out your kickboard point chart. I, and I'm hoping to get to a, a point where they don't, I don't have to say that, mm -hmm. but, um, I make a point of saying at the beginning of every class, announce for them to take it out because I think still they're forgetting that it even exists. Mm -hmm. So, but then they're like, oh, right, right, right. And then they put it out in front of them. And um, that gives them an opportunity to check where they're at in the, the, their totals um, and see how far they have to go. So I think that, that that off the bat gets them kind of in the let's do good mindset before they have an opportunity to really get into the we're gonna screw around mindset. So how does, does middle school do the same thing? Well, that don't have this middle school, okay. so that's the thing, like I want, mm -hmm. that's where I want to get, is yep. using something like that with middle school. Okay, so I think we have our action steps for um, what your classroom plan uh -oh, will, will tend to look like. So, this works for the younger grades and they have their chart, so going back, our action steps are going to be to solidify the plan to the middle school team, mm -hmm. to tweak it um, a little bit for their needs, and adapt this tracker for 
the, the middle school team. So when you, the middle school. So when do you think you're going to um, implement the tracker? Um, I would say after next week. Like I could take next week to do what you said about um, some kind of surveying the kids mm -hmm. to see what sort of incentives they would like, and then I can also spend a couple. You know, have a couple talk sessions with the middle mm -hmm. school teachers, and then I would say by the beginning of next week, I can start fresh on Monday and then roll it out. And that'll give me time to get them all typed up and printed out and cut and everything. Because I think this also provides a visual for them too. Because mm -hmm. they also need the um, visual for that too. So, and how do you, how do you want to track their steps as well too? I think I need to think more on that because I don't think that this is this is working with mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. the same way. Maybe it comes down to uh, like they uh, they need to maybe do something. Maybe it has to get built into this chart for them. Like mm -hmm. um, they'll have to, maybe they have to write the date and they have to mark down when they. I don't know when they have, when they get to a certain step. I mean, I'll keep track of it as well, but I think that. Maybe the action of, of writing that down will be like a, a good connection from their brain to their hand, you know, like that, that they, instead of me just throwing this down and moving on. I was gonna say, so how do you think you can get buy in from them? I don't into know, that's this? what I'm, that's, okay. where I'm, that's where my challenge so, is. Like, so when you survey them and you are telling them about this, um, the incentives and the warning charts with them, it's make it part of your community agreements that mm -hmm. you have. So what happens in our community expectations? Um, Cause you don't have to like reinvent, reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. So you have your community expectations up. What are those community expectations means in terms of this? Or what do our core value means in terms of this? Mm -hmm. So you can tie it to the core values for that who's showing excellence and just type them here for the middle school is there and you show excellence, prior collaboration, X, Y, and Z in, in here and this is what you're earning. Certificate, I have a treasure chest, a wall of fame. You don't, I don't think you have to modify this much mm -hmm. for them. I think you just have to present it to them. Okay, and I think maybe next week, in addition, another action step is like, maybe I'll take, a pause on projects with middle school, at least, at least for one of the classes, I mean like one of the sessions, and have it be a focus on culture, again, and kind of like re restating, restating mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. and also have them do some activities around, around culture. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's not a bad idea, once in a while, to break away from uh, the you know my, my curriculum and mm -hmm. and readdress and talk about culture. I, I was just coming to see what's cool in art. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a bad idea at all um, for that. So when um, yeah, because I I think if you just introduce it, have you do you ever introduce this to them? Because mm -hmm. if you just even introduce this to them, I think you would have that buy-in. Just because they love their people work points, they are excited when they get their certificates mm -hmm. on Monday, if they have their 20 points. Some of them have not been making it, so it's another opportunity for them to, to get their points that they need to get the certificate on Monday. I wonder if there's like a way, because I know that, I know that part of uh, being a distinguished teacher is having students take more ownership of processes in the class. I wonder if I can somehow have the kids be in charge of giving out the stickers for the points rather so than- So then you just have to, what's the word? Identify who your leader is in right. the classroom. Because I need to make sure it's somebody mm -hmm. that's gonna be honest and not- I know exactly who it could be. Yeah. Jeremiah. Yeah. For eight, that's for eighth yep. grade, yeah. For eighth, for eighth grade, definitely right. could be um, Jeremiah for, for eighth grade, he would definitely be a good um, person leader for that and always pushing positivity. Um, Joshua, um, he needs some positivity right now. Mm -hmm. So it, okay. it could definitely be somebody like him um, in there. Um, 
surprisingly, Keon is very helpful and mm-hmm. he loves jobs. He's been awesome in my class yeah. lately. He's and so, been on point. So that would definitely be a reward for him. So if you can, we're gonna write that down, identify one leader from each middle school class. Mm-hmm. And this is K through, I'm K through, six through eight, right? I'm gonna make it fifth through eight. Oh, you could have gave that to the fifth grade. They would love it. Well, I, I, yeah, I was kind of. Yeah, they're still in that age where they're still babies, and we're still yeah. they're, they're they're still the elementary slash primary a little bit that haven't even made it to the middle school yeah. yet. Right. Yeah. That okay. So we have our action steps: solidify the plan, um, adapt the tracker for middle school, middle school survey have. Um, have some middle schoolers for activities around culture and identify one leader for the middle school class to help buy in with K4 and try. All right. So, and then the next step is then you're going to be um, implementing the tracker after um, next week and conducting a survey. So I'll share with you your action steps. Um, usually, you, we I don't know if we have coaching notebooks for this year already or not. No, not yet. Okay. So you, you write your. You always have a notebook. Write your coaching um, things down in your um, in your coaching notebook. But I also share them with you in, um, at your email okay. too, for that too. So I know that is my time with you because you are headed out. Yep. So I appreciate it and I thank you. Thank you.